Whether you say Chinese takeaway or Chinese takeout, it's all about cloud computing. Coming up next on HP Tech Talk. Welcome to HP Tech Talk. I'm Andy McCaskey from SDR News. And this is, of course, the series where we look at all sorts of ways that Hewlett Packard is defining a new style of IT. We'll look at information from servers, from storage, from networking, and of course, cloud computing. And our guide, as always, in the cloud computing world, Mr. Steven Spector. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Andy, and um, I hope everyone out there is surviving, at least here in North America, the, the weather. Down here in Austin, they're actually closing schools for ice and cold weather. I never thought that would happen when I moved here. And I know um, the rest of the country is probably bundled up in bed. Maybe they're watching this on their road team. Okay. Well, uh, what are we going to be talking about today with respect to cloud computing, and uh, who's our guest? So I have uh, John McDermott today, and he speaks a uh, foreign language, so I want to raise a flag to our guests. And uh, John comes from our professional services group, especially in the education uh, aspect, looking at cloud computing for business users, really understanding how they use it, why they use it, what's involved. So we won't be doing so much uh, bits and bytes today. We'll take a little bit of a higher level view of cloud and let some of the uh, business users get a perspective of how to choose the right provider, why companies use cloud, what are the advantages, very much business focused. Uh, John, uh, we joked about being separated by common language. Uh, you, of course, are calling from the UK. Sorry. What exactly is the, the business challenge that uh, cloud computing is uh, so successful in addressing? Okay, so, um... In, in my view, the economic climate today is is driving businesses to innovate and to change, which can create unpredictability and fluctuating business demands. This, in turn, can make the delivery of IT services to the business a significant challenge. IT organizations are already under constant pressure to deliver more for less, even though business demand for IT continues to rise. All the talk around cloud as a, as a, as a, as a, as a solution has brought the topic of infrastructure to the forefront of both technical and business discussions, creating pressure on IT to deliver cloud solutions in the short term. So how does cloud computing uh, help to, to fill the bill, the, this, to meet this business need that, uh, that people have? Okay, so the great promise of cloud is, is, is straightforward. It promises to smooth out the capacity curves, coping with the peaks and short-term demands for processing power, storage, etc. We call this bursting. In meeting these demands, we don't want to carry excessive capacity on a just-in-case, as this can be very costly to the business. So the promises of cloud computing has an irresistible value proposition that both business and IT leaders are very, very keen to capture. Cloud should allow an IT organization to change, transform, if you like, into a provider of agile, efficient, and above all, flexible services. To cook a Chinese dinner only takes a few minutes, i.e. you can go and buy cloud services in a few minutes. But the result is determined by several factors. It's something quick, okay. it's something easy. It looks like you could go down the list and just uh, uh, check things off. Well, exactly. So what, did you, what, what are you gonna use to cook the food? Are you going to use a frying pan or a wok? There's different outcomes by using either one or the other. What kind of ingredients and of the right proportion? How much noodles are you going to use? How many peppers, the sauce, etc.? In other words, what is your dietary requirements? What's your flavor sensations going to be? Did you achieve the desired outcome? Did it taste as good as you expected? So one restaurant is better than another restaurant. You go back to the better restaurant because it's actually delivering to your expectation. And are there any dangers to be avoided when we're cooking this dinner? For example, undercooked chicken could give you food poisoning. So again, all the above can be decided and prepared beforehand, stored in a fridge, ready for someone to request this takeout dinner, uh, well before you even think of warming the pan. 
And the quality of the take takeout depends a great deal on the preparation and proper mitigation of those risks that we talked about. Yeah, so it, it sounds like uh, uh, choosing a proper cloud provider would be uh, similar to choosing uh, uh, a good Chinese restaurant, uh, even though you well, could uh, assemble it uh, pretty quickly your, yourself uh, with, with mixed results. Well, I, I think so. If you're following my example, then yes. An example restaurant would, of course, be HP. HP, having designed, deployed, and supported the evolution of thousands of cloud implementations across the globe, but there are many other restaurants available, and you and of course you can cook the dinner all by yourself. Let me give you an example. Um, DreamWorks. I think everybody would have heard of DreamWorks, the uh, multi-billion-dollar uh, uh, animation film company. So they've got an IT department, and what they do with their IT, they they take pieces of film and they put them together. This animation, they put them together. We call that rendering. And to do and or render a three-hour film would take thousands of processors and huge amounts of storage. So and you won't want to render a film every day. You won't want to render a three hour film every day. So while it's not being rendered, while it's not being rendering, you've got all this vast capacity, storage and process, et cetera, sat there doing nothing. It's a waste. So what DreamWorks do, they create they've created sufficient capacity to render up to roundabout, for example, 30 minutes of film. And when they come to put these 30 minutes together in the big picture for the whole movie, they come to HP. See what I mean? So you've got their existing infrastructure, then they burst out of that infrastructure where they've got this peak demand, and they come to HP for that service. It makes sense, but I'm trying to understand what additional value HP brings as opposed to just going out to a wide variety of cloud providers and assembling uh, the the active machines that they needed for that uh, for that rendering event. Why would you go to a, t a takeout restaurant and why would you go to a sit down restaurant? You know, it's the quality. You can pay five dollars for a takeout. You can pay fifty dollars for another restaurant. You know, it takes your money. It you, you takes your choice. You if what the business wants as an outcome. So you would come to HP for guaranteed levels of service, guaranteed uh, risk mitigation, such as information security, the biggest issue on that. HP, for example, uh, uh, you know, are working with NIST uh, to, to make sure that information security is top of the agenda. So if you were to uh, summarize uh, the business purposes, the business advantage that cloud deployment gives, uh, how, how would you tie it up in a bundle? <clears throat> for, so for cloud, will enable a, a, an organization to uh, meet the demands of its business. IT, in general, is uh, as a cost to the business, but it also can br bring great value to the business. IT facilitates and underpins business outcomes. What cloud does, it enables us to create that service faster, smarter, cheaper. This is Stephen, do you have other, other comments or other perspective on uh, some of the points just being made? Well, I think this is the first time I've ever heard cloud computing compared with a Chinese restaurant. And as HP offers a lot of professional services up front to help you determine all this. We have uh, workshops where we come and spend a day with you trying to not just explain why cloud works, but understand your business, understand what you need from an IT perspective and then how cloud can solve that. Yeah. John, can you uh, tell us uh, uh, briefly a little bit about the tool and how one might uh, uh, implement that or become involved with HP to explore that? Sure, so, um, uh, and, and thanks. So HP have got a cloud, what we call a cloud simulation. We take a, a group of people uh, into a room, we give them roles and responsibilities as they're, as they're running an IT department on behalf of a business. Uh, and we'll take them from uh, utilizing uh, four uh, global uh, data centers operating in the Americas, Asia, uh, EMEA, and Africa. And they're all supporting businesses in those areas. Um, and then uh, we'll take them from uh, looking at the traditional data center and move it into cloud services. Well, how that works is quite simple. You think of the Americas, okay? We've got a data center in America. We're doing cloud services and we're doing uh, uh, nine to five. So when America is asleep, all that infrastructure, all that capacity is actually not being used. You look across the pond over to India, way across the pond over to India, 
And while America are asleep, India are awake. So if India have a burst or a requirement, a peak requirement, they have to go and source their own IT again. So they have to you know, add to their own uh, infrastructure. Why can't they use the infrastructure that's over in the Americas? The Americas aren't using it. So getting people to understand, uh, for example, a common service catalog, what uh, data centers have and start sharing, sharing a common infrastructure is the first step. Once we've shared all this infrastructure and then we still have demands for additional peaks and uh, peak, peak demands, we can then start using public cloud services or managed cloud services and so on. So the simulation takes you from traditional data center through to going into using the cloud, looking at the risks associated with the cloud and, uh, and, and takes you on that, that, that wonderful journey. It uh, enables you. Stephen, this sounds like uh, a very profitable uh, topic for another episode. What do you think? Uh, yeah, we, we definitely want to spend more time on that. And, uh, you know, but of course, I have lots of uh, different uh, cloud people at HP waiting in line to uh, speak with you. The amount of content I can give you is endless. And hopefully our customers are enjoying this. And, and if you're looking for a specific topic from HP and cloud, you know, let Andy know, let myself know. We can uh, we can certainly set that up for our customers that are viewing these. Okay. Well, thanks to both of you for joining us uh, here today. Thanks to you folks uh, for watching as well, uh, either on the Roku, on our uh, YouTube channel, and uh, now on Facebook uh, as well. Uh, thanks very much. We'll see you next time on HP Tech Talk.